In this video, we will show you how and where to start investigating a no spark situation. Let's go into it. Hi there, my name is Stefan, welcome back to Paramotor Engine Maintenance Series. And as I stated before, in this video we will show you where and how to start checking a no spark situation. Well, the ignition system on these engines is very simple and I like it this way, because what is not there cannot break. Now, where to start if you have no spark? That's quite simple, everything starts with a switch. If your paramotor has a switch on the frame, on the main frame or whatever, please be sure that that switch is into the on position. Still no spark, then go further. Usually you have a button on the throttle. Be sure that that button is not stuck and that button does not is not in the off position, so actually your engine is killed by the safety switch on the throttle. So that can happen actually really often because you put the throttle next to the ground in the sand or in the dirt and the little button can get stuck. Once you check the button also, so your main switch is on, the button is not stuck and is, is, is releasing, it's functioning as it should, then we need to go back to the engine itself and see what's the reason that the engine doesn't start and has no spark. First things first, mount a new spark plug. Now and then the spark plug can go bad and uh, it's very often that after you change the spark plug you will have a spark again and you can go flying, so no problem there. You mounted a new spark plug and still no spark, what then? Then check the high tension lead or high current wire that goes from the ignition coil to the spark plug because it may happen that because of the vibrations it will just rub against a metal surface or the carbon surface is in this example and the carbon is a very good conductor so if this will rub and the, the isolation of the wire itself is very thin the current can penetrate that isolation and will just discharge directly to the engine block or to the carbon or the electrical conductor if nearby and then the spark will not reach your spark plug. If this wire is intact and it has no damage, then we need to go further down the line. And further down the line, we will just see the ignition coil. And actually, the ignition coil can go bad. It's very rarely that it's happening so, but it actually can go bad. It's a part that can break. So now, in, the, in this video, we will show you how to check, replace and calibrate the gap in between the ignition coil and the flywheel. It's very simple, so stay with us. To reach the flywheel and have a better access, first remove the pull starter. Once we have the pull starter out, we can inspect it and check for wear and damage, but we already have a video about that, so please check the video in the description down below. Now we can have a complete access to the ignition coil, which is this one, with a 4 mm Allen bit. We can remove these bolts. Remove the wiring around it. Now, in the case of Master Plus, we have another little clamp that goes to the engine carter support. We should remove that with a 7mm key.
Now that I have the ignition coil removed, we can actually measure it with a multimeter and we can actually tell if it's good or bad. I will show you right now how to do it. For doing that, we will need a multimeter that is able to measure resistance and we will need to measure two windings inside this ignition coil and one is the primary coil and then the secondary coil which is in charge of the high current and the spark itself. So for checking the, the primary coil, we will go on the 200 ohm scale in between the ground and the lead. And the primary is 1.5. For measuring the secondary winding, the secondary, the high voltage one, we will go to 200 kilo ohms scale. We will measure it in between the spark plug cap and the ground again. And it's 4.9 kilo ohms. So secondary 4.9 kilo ohms. From my experience, I can tell you that these values are pretty good and actually this engine was running, so they must be good, right? But now, as a reference, I will show you the values and we will measure a brand new coil. So here we have a brand new coil, again, primary circuit in between the ground and the lead. And we will have a value of 1.8 ohms, so new. Primary 1.8 ohms, secondary again 200 kilo ohms in between the lead that goes to the spark plug and the ground of the coil 4.96. So secondary 4.96 kilo ohms. This was old. So as you can see, these two coils are giving us pretty much the same values. So as a point of reference, your coil, if you measure it, primary and secondary, as I showed you, it should be in between one point, the primary coil, it should be in between 1.3, 1.4 and 2 ohms and secondary in between 4 and 5 kilo ohms. So this is again a way of telling if the coil is bad or not. Now let's take a little special troubleshooting case. Let's say that your engine runs very good, starts first pull, no problem, while it's cold, but as soon as it starts to get a little bit warm or gets hotter, the engine starts to bug, it's very difficult to reach the high RPM or even stops. What can go wrong then? You may think about carburation or some other problems, but very rarely and yet I did find this kind of malfunction is that the coil can fail while it's getting warm or hot. Well, you just need a heat gun, a regular infrared thermometer that you can buy in any hardware store. So you can, you should heat up this ignition coil to about 40, 50 degrees, which should be plenty enough to spot the defect and then measure it again and compare with the values that you had while the ignition coil was cold. Let's do that now. So we have a new coil here that we already measured. We have the new, the primary coil resistance, which is 1.8 ohm and secondary coil resistance for the high, high tension for the spark, 4.96 kilo ohm. Let's heat this up to about 40, 50 degrees and see what's happening. Now, as you can see on the thermometer, we have around 50, 50 degrees and decreasing. Let's measure it while hot. So on the 200 ohm scale, ground, primary, and it stabilizes at around new while warm. This was cold. Warm. We have primary at about 1.9 ohms, which is normal because while the temperature increases, the resistance increases a little bit. Now let's measure the secondary. Let's go to the 20 kilo ohms scale. Stabilizes at around 5.6. So 
so as we can see the values of this coil are still good a little bit higher of course because with the heat the resistance will increase a little bit it depends on the coil and uh, so on unfortunately i don't have a bad coil with a malfunction that will appear while hot so i cannot show you how it actually behaves while it's hot but during my previous mechanic career i just had a lot and a lot of failures like this and uh, the while the engine was uh, was cold it was running perfectly and all of a sudden the engine started to bog and it was difficult to rev and stuff and the ignition coil was to blame so it really was to give it a look at the coil and try to measure it cold and hot because it can give you some troubles if it will go bad and it's time to put it back to the engine I will show you how it's done when mounting the ignition coil back onto the engine you should set up the gap in between the coil and the flywheel magnets that are just spinning around with the flywheel around 0 0.4 0 0.5 millimeters setting this gap is very straightforward and for doing that I'm using some very simple pieces of cardboard that you we can actually measure so this piece of cardboard is 0.42 millimeters this piece of cardboard is 0.5 millimeters for the purpose of this video i will use this 0.4 millimeters and doing so is very simple you just put the magnets in the up position where the coil will just stick to the to the flywheel now you insert the cardboard let the ignition coil to stick onto the flywheel magnets and now because you have the cardboard the 0.4 millimeter cardboard in between the coil and the flywheel once we tighten the ignition onto the engine and remove the cardboard we are sure that we have a perfect 0.4 millimeters gap let's go onto it apply a little bit of thread lock onto the screws Take the bolts one by one. Using the torque wrench, torque them down to the specified torque. Now, with some pliers, we can remove the cardboard. So after we removed the cardboard, I hope that you can actually see in the video, we have a perfect gap in between the ignition coil and the flywheel of 0.4 millimeters, which should give us a pretty good and powerful spark. Let's mount everything back together now. Again, using a torque wrench to the specified torque, tighten up the bolts. Install the wiring with the coil. Install the ground wire, which we actually mount here. Now install everything back together as it was before on your particular engine. We have some uh, spiral, plastic spiral that goes over it and it's actually a protection for friction and uh, for wearing and tearing. So I, li I like it, I like this solution very much.
and we are good to go. After installing everything back together and tightening all the bolts to the specified torque, we are sure that all the parts will work and we will have spark, we will have ignition and we can go flying. So to make a short summary of troubleshooting your spark issue, first be sure that if you have a main switch on the paramotor frame or whatever on the paramotor that switch is on, then go to the throttle, be sure that that switch is not jammed or locked into off position and if those switches are okay and they are functioning as they should then go on to the wires to the ignition coil and check the ignition coil checking the ignition coil actually can be done onto the engine but be sure that you disconnect the wires and the spark plug and everything so there is no active connection to the ignition to the coil itself so if the ignition coil is bad then we just showed you how to replace it how to set up the gap with a simple piece of cardboard in between the magnets and the ignition coil and everything is quite fast and simple to do be sure that you just follow the specifications and the steps that we showed you in this video and you should be good to go guys thank you very much for watching Please be sure that you hit the like and subscribe button. I'm very grateful for sharing this video with your friends and stay tuned because we will have quite a few more videos to add to this uh, paramotor engine maintenance list and soon enough we will go deep inside into the engine and we will show you how to change bearings, crankshafts, pistons and so on. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Ciao.